Let's begin today's session. Welcome to Woodburn Accountants and Advisors China webinar series on China Superpower 3, which is Superpower 3 in the China Roadmap, all about strategy, business planning, and budget. You join us for part two of this webinar series. It's day two out of four on how to create your China business plan. China is the world's second largest economy and an important market for any international company. Even if you are a small player, it's important to think big and have a China strategy in place. It is a common journey that businesses go through and it is more predictable than most people realize. From hundreds of entrepreneurs, companies, and leaders from around the globe, we've learned that there are certain problems and frustrations that come along at very predictable times. And most importantly, there are also certain ways to overcome them if you know the journey ahead of you. Woodburn have devised a China roadmap for companies that are looking to grasp at a China opportunity, implement a compliant and safe structure, and grow the business exponentially. Each company has their own unique journey in China, but the milestones and the superpowers to be acquired are all the same. So in this webinar series, we'll be looking at having our registrants acquire superpower number three. Now with COVID-19, it is the time to put ideas to paper. Developing your strategy, your business plan, your budget for the Chinese market, these are critical documents to be continuously used during your China journey. Your China business isn't something you can haphazardly throw together in a few hours. To do it right, you need to take time to partner with your management team and align the budget with the business plan and strategy, even if it takes longer than you would like. Today, we will be talking about how you can create your China business plan, what are the most important aspects within, within it, um, and how you can start jotting down ideas. But before we begin today's session, um, I always want to know who my audience is. So for those of you that are on here, um, again, let me know who you are. So I kind of define people into three categories when looking at the Chinese market. There are the newbies to China. They are usually companies or entrepreneurs that have found a certain opportunity in China, and they're looking to gain a certain level of education on how to protect their business. Or in this situation, hopefully, if you are, if that defines you, you're on here because you want to start writing your business plan for China. Um, the next is are the startups in China. These are usually companies that have been established in China for maybe one to three years. Um, they've been so focused on the core activities, and, and let's let's be honest, mostly sales, in relation to developing um, their business that they have forgotten or ignored um, all the administrative functions that take place and they're kind of now stuck where they don't know where to go, they don't know how to grow, um, and then they're in this period of actually really being stuck. So I hope if you are a startup, you're on here because you wanna actually drop down your ideas, create your vision for your company to know where you're gonna take it and how you're gonna take it there in the next three to five years. Um, for those that of you that are experienced China hands, I assume you're on here to kind of get updates, new fresh ideas on how to create your business plan, um, and just get an idea on how other people are doing it. Please, 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 please interact with me. Again, there are a lot of new names out there. Um, Patricia Howland, let me know what you are. Um, Maria Didi, let me know. Um, let me know who you are. Please do interact with me. I'm looking at the register, uh, the attendees list right now. Julia, let me know. Um, there are a lot of names from yesterday's and a lot of you have already reached out and contacted me. Um, but if I don't know you, please do interact and let me know uh, who you are. It's a great way to get a bit of an understanding. So how these webinars work, if you're very new to them, is basically I'm here to educate you. And if you've joined my webinar on the China Roadmap, you will know that education is the first superpower that you need to achieve. So it's already great that you're on here because you're here to learn and understand how things work in China. Um, I have muted everybody. 
uh, for the main reason that there will be no distraction and noise, although I do have my children behind me, so there might be a little bit of distraction from them. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, do take notes. Um, and again, if you've got questions, right, this is 60 to 80 minutes of your time, right? So if you do have questions or comments, add them into the questions section. Um, make this a valuable use of your time spent. Just a little bit of a technical issue, uh, not issue, but a technical detail. Um, in previous webinars in the last two months, um, I've had some individuals having problems connecting either to the GoToWebinar, staying online, or listening to the audio. GoToWebinar is suffering a huge influx of webinars uh, and trainings, and as a result of that, it is making sometimes the system a little bit haywire. If that does happen to you, please note we are recording this session. Don't get frustrated. I understand everyone's frustrations. I don't own GoToWebinar, but the session will be recorded and it will be posted on the YouTube channel. Yesterday's session is already up there. I just hadn't had time to email everyone with the presentation and, and, and the video. Um, but it will be up there so that you can review it um, in your own time. Why am I able to help? Well, first, let me introduce myself. Um, my name is Christina kohler Lucia. I'm the head of business advisory at Woodburn Accountants and Advisors. I have 16 years of hand-on experience in corporate services and compliance in China, um, predominantly out of Shanghai. I've helped over 500 companies with their expansion into the Chinese market, their implementation, as well as their growth. Um, and I am the creator of the China Roadmap Program, um, which is something I try to put all my clients on in, in order to accelerate their expansion into the market and their growth um, in the market. Uh, in February, I had a bit of time on my hands due to COVID-19. So I wrote an ebook on my observations and insights um, to consider for your China business during COVID-19. A lot of the principles in there still are in existence, even though China is slowly coming out of, out of the crisis. Um, if you would like to get a copy of it, please email me personally at christina at woodburnglobal.com, type in China ebook, and I'd be happy to give you a complimentary copy. All right, so to give everyone a bit of perspective, because I think there's a lot of people on here that didn't join the March webinar series and hence have not reviewed um, the webinar on the China Roadmap. So this is a program that I've developed for companies that are looking to expand into the market, implement themselves properly in the market, and also grow exponentially in the market. There are three milestones. The first one is opportunity, the second one is implementation, and the third one is growth. In overall, within each milestone, there are three superpowers that I want my clients to acquire. Once they've acquired those superpowers, and mind you, it's not that once you've acquired it, you stop doing it. It's just that you get into a habit of continuing that superpower um, to make sure that your structure in China and what you're looking to do in China is bulletproof and gives you a forward direction of your business, okay? Um, education is superpower one, research superpower two. We're talking today about superpower three, which is strategy, business planning, budgeting. Four is ecosystem development, building your network. Five is protection, protecting your business, protecting yourself. Six is one that all my clients hate, which is setting up operational guidelines and system processes. And in the third milestone, we're looking at actual growth. In order to grow, you've got to be able to read your financial numbers. You've got to be able to analyze them in order to be able to focus and make decisions for your business in China. Now, this China Roadmap program is not necessarily for companies that are looking to set up entities in China. It's for anybody that is looking to transact with or in China, all right? So today, we're looking at superpower three, which is in the opportunity milestone. Um, and we're gonna be covering today um, why it's important to create your business plan for China um, and then how to create it, okay? What should be your chapters, let's say, 
in your business plan. So let's start off with why it's important to create a business plan. Um, and I really like this phrase. So a business plan is actually, from my perspective, something that is quite difficult to do. Um, I find it easier to create the business plan than the budget, mind you. I find the budget extremely difficult. But the business plan is something that once it's down on paper, um, makes your vision real. It brings reality to your business. Um, and ultimately, once it is on paper, it helps you to manage and grow your business. It helps you to vocalize your vision to people, to investors, to employees. Like it says here in this quote, it helps you to tr attract financing um, managers and staff for your business. Um, when I meet a lot of companies for the first time and they're trying to explain to me what they want to do in China, it's a lot of garbled mumble jumble um, because it's not clear in their head exactly what they want to do. And when I ask them, could you actually, first of all, write it on paper, even just in bullet point form, what do you want to achieve in the Chinese market? And please stay away from, I want to make money. What, what do you want to do? What activities do you want to do? What, what is your vision for the market? What, do you, what is your ultimate goal? Um, then once they have it on paper, they can communicate it so much better to me. And I have then the ability to help them because I have a much better understanding. And this goes for anybody that you're looking to build your network with. When you want to talk to a chamber of commerce or you want to talk to a lawyer or a corporate service provider or a friend, um, or a mentor about your business, or your boss, you need to have a very clear vision of what you want to do. And keep in mind that if you're trying to convince someone about your China business, whether it's investors, employees, managers, you better have a very clear vision and a, a, a very clear ability to communicate that. Um, otherwise, you won't get the financing, you won't get the managers, and you won't get the staff. So for me, the business plan, um, when I go to the managing directors of my company, I have to be able to communicate transparently, clearly, what will be my growth plan for the next five years. I've got to make sure that I do that within a 30 minute time frame, And I've got a PowerPoint up that's explaining very quickly and succinctly what I want to do. And that's what I want everyone to achieve today. So, what does a business plan create for you? It creates clarity, a clear direction. It provides you with a future vision. It helps you to attract and secure financing. It helps you to attract team members, because don't forget in China, in many situations, you're gonna have to convince people to work for you when you're starting up your business in China. It helps you to manage and control your company. It also helps you to maintain focus, and when things are not going so well, it really does help you to fuel ambitions and give you motivation. So all of these items here should just be very simple reasons why you want to create your business plan. Now, in the um, registration form, I got a very interesting question from one of the registrants, which is, in reality, when you're looking at a business plan, what is the most important part to the business plan. Um, from my perspective, and probably from an investor's perspective, the whole thing is going to be critical. Every single chapter that you create in your business plan is gonna be important. But if I had to pick out four items um, out of this list that I've created here, then I would probably say market analysis, marketing and sales, funding, and financial projections will be the critical aspects that will convince an investor to give you financing. And these four chapters will also help you to convince people to work for you, okay? Um, this is basically a very brief chapter guideline that I've created um, to show how to create your business plan, basically. So there's an executive summary, which is a snapshot of your business, a company description. So if you think about your website, you'll have an about us section. 
take that and that's your company description. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, you should probably also have a section in there about you, the entrepreneur, your background, what's your biography. Um, market analysis, like I say, always, 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 and as you would have seen on the China roadmap, superpower number two, research, okay? In your business plan, you gotta show stats. You have to show research on your industry, on your market, on your competitors. You gotta do a certain level of benchmarking. Organization and management is obviously something that should be added in there. It's something that you should educate yourself on. How are you, or, or what type of operation are you going to create to fulfill your China business? So is that organization going to sit in the head office? Is that organization going to sit in China? Is the management going to be in the head office? Is the management going to be on the ground in China? Um, and this is again where on the implementation side, developing operational guidelines is so important. But if you already have that chapter in your business plan, it's done. You've got to know how you're going to organize everything. Who are going to be the decision makers for the China business? Who's going to sign off on contracts? Um, is your finance department okay with the whole transaction business and how the cash flow is going to work and the invoicing? You got to think all, about all those aspects. Service and product, very important. And I want to give it a, um, a case study here. Uh, well, it, it ha has actually happened to about five, six clients of mine now during COVID-19. Um, they've all come into China with one particular product, um, product line in mind. And due to COVID-19, um, they have had to change and pivot because of certain restrictions that developed with the product lines. So as a result, many of them pivoted to new product lines and or service lines that they could offer in the interim period. This is why, again, business plans are so important because you gotta take this document and analyze it in situations like COVID-19 where you're gonna have to pivot your business in some shape or form. If that chapter is already in your business plan where you say, okay, phase one is product X, Phase two, we're going to have product X, Y, and Z. Phase three, we're going to have product X, Y, and Z and service line item A and B. It gives you a direction and gives you also the ability to pivot at any point that there might be an obstacle or a crisis. Marketing and sales. Well, if you've got a service or a product, you got to tell your investor how you're going to market yourself. Okay? How are you going to market your business and your sales strategy? All right? Um, have you reached out to... PR agencies or marketing agencies, have you thought about the sales structure that you're going to create and the transactional structure? Funding request, again, geared mostly to entrepreneurs, but having said that, I do have a lot of um, individuals that are in certain roles like sales managers or international sales managers or international business development managers that are exploring the Chinese market for their managing director or the owner of the company or the board of directors, they need to then request funding to them as well. So it's not just looking for financing from a variety of different investors, it's also requesting funding from your own boss, right, within an organization and company. And how much do you need? And how much money will you need for the next three to five years? And this is where the budget becomes so critical because the budget becomes a chapter within your business plan. And we'll talk about budgets tomorrow. You've got to have financial projections and financial forecasting within your business plan, all right? Um, in the appendix, usually we'll, we'll tell people, you know, think about job descriptions for people you might need, whether that might be someone in your head office or someone on the ground. Think about additional permits you might need. What are the legal aspects we have to think about when incorporating in China, okay? So these are all the chapters. Um, another question that I got was, in what format should a business plan be in? Um, listen, I do mine in PowerPoint presentations because then I just use the PowerPoint directly to the people I need to show it to. Um, whether you wanna do that in a Word document, completely up to you, I find because this is already quite a difficult exercise, I have a PowerPoint presentation for every single chapter 
um, and I utilize that and amend it as I go on. I find it easier to amend things in the PowerPoint than I do in a, in a, in a Word document. So please do remember, business planning is most effective when it's an ongoing process. Um, I, for example, had to completely redo my business plan for 2020 and my budget for 2020 come February, uh, end of February. Um, many people in China had to completely revamp all their business plans and budgets. I'm under the assumption that if you're based in Europe or the US um, or in Australia, you're also revamping right now your business plans and your budgets based on what's happening with COVID-19. So this should be a perfect example for you to realize that this is a document that you can continuously update with new data, new stats, new strategies, new directions. Um, by updating it continuously, it does allow you in situations like COVID-19, adapt and pivot in the right direction. And like I said, COVID-19 is a perfect example. So, it allows you to obviously amend, add, and remove chapters and clauses. Um, and it, it's actually these, these um, uh, points that are listed on this slide are absolutely what has happened to most people in China and probably on a global scale where they have had to amend and change their objectives, goals. Um, they've had to find new service lines or product lines, which means a new market, new customers, new competitors. Um, they've had to then think about operational changes and operational um, guidelines have had to be amended. Um, you know, many people are laying off staff or downsizing salaries, which impacts budget forecasting. It impacts your, your workforce. Um, and ultimately, you know, for those of you that are scratching for financing, um, obviously, it's impacted you because maybe your investor has also said, I've got a halt now on, on this. Seven tips to a perfectly written business plan. I don't know if it'd be perfectly written, um, but the first one is obviously research, right? I can't emphasize this more. This is superpower number two. Um, there's no point writing a business plan if you don't have research at your fingertips to give uh, conclusive evidence that China is the right market for you. Okay, it is the research is there actually to help decisions be made and to convince the people that you need to convince to give you money to implement your business. Okay, the stats will give you the proof. All right, you've got to determine the purpose of your plan. Okay, what are your short and your long term goals? Okay. In addition to that, you've got to create a company profile. And now for China, this is absolutely critical because if you are marketing to a Chinese consumer or to a Chinese business, your company profile will have to be completely, will have to be written differently compared to the profile you have in the Western world because the consumers and the businesses will, their mindset is different. And this is where it is potentially very important to have a marketing agency or a PR firm help you to develop that company profile, okay? It helps you to document all aspects of your business. You should be thinking about all aspects of your business. Now, if you are a company and you're looking to set up a subsidiary in China, I mean, you've got it actually easy because what you can do is go to your boss and say, listen, can I have the template of the business plan of our home jurisdiction and use that as my guide of all the aspects that I have to think about for the China business? You will probably have to tweak it along the way, but you already have a template then that your bosses are familiar with because the chapters will follow um, and you use that as your guideline, okay? Marketing is something that people truly underestimate in the Chinese market, and you've got to have a strategic marketing plan in place. So as a tip for a strategic marketing plan, I would go around and talk to as many marketing agencies that are specific to the Chinese market. And I want to tell you here, there are a lot. If you would like me to give you some references, I'm more than happy to. But the first job of a marketing agency should be doing a profile on you, your firm, your vision. They should also be doing a, um, 
I guess you could call it a background check. So a background check on, or maybe a brand awareness check is a better term to use on who knows your brand in China, who knows your products or services, are people familiar with it? Um, they will do a check to see where your standing is today. They should actually be the ones creating your strategic marketing plan. All right. Um, which means that you don't even have to do that chapter. You just have to communicate with the marketing agencies, discuss with them. Now, obviously, budget will come into place. You should absolutely have a budget for marketing. Okay. If you are not familiar with how to market in China, please don't put that on your shoulders and assume you know how to do it. It is a very different market to market in to. Um, and, and please be aware of that. Again, it does not cost anything to have that first interview and phone call with the marketing agencies. It's just time. And you will get so much information from them. Point six, very, very um, relatable. Make it adaptable based on your audience. What you are doing now in the US, the UK, Australia, Canada, Germany, France is not what you will be doing in China. I can tell you this right now. It will be a different business plan, a different uh, way of transacting. The operational guidelines will not be adaptable. They will have to be tweaked based on the Chinese market. And then most importantly, and this is something a lot of people forget to do, is share your plan and explain why you care about this project. Okay, why is this project about going into China so important for you? Where does your passion come from? Where does your dedication come from? You've got to convince investors, bosses, managing directors, board of directors, customers, team members of why going into the Chinese market is interesting for you. I, I've left out suppliers. Okay. So, you know, by explaining, basically, by explaining why you care about the business in China, it creates a sort of emotional connection with others where most likely from a psychological perspective, they will support your move to go into the market. All right, you've got to have that emotional connection in order to convince people why China is so interesting for you. But you've got to be able to verbalize and communicate it very, very well. So um, out of this list, um, sorry, this list, pardon me, um, where you have the key chapters. I have taken an example of organization and management, okay? Um, and we're gonna look a little bit at what you can put as subheadings under organization and management, okay? So when you're looking at the, the, the chapter on organization and management, okay, the first thing you need to consider is your structural plan. Do you need a company in China? Or can you, in phase one, um, develop your structure that everything can be done out of the head office? Okay, This is a question that you have to analyze. Do we need a company in China? If we do need a company, what type of company? But if it is at all possible to do something in China without having a company, please, everyone who's on here, take that route. Okay, setting up a company, it's investment, it's capital. And I just want to emphasize here, if you actually don't need it, it takes two years to liquidate it. Okay, so it, it's really not something that should be taken lightly. And obviously, it's really sexy to say, hey, I got a subsidiary in China, and I'm in China, and look at me, I'm doing business in China. You know, it's great. You don't need it. What a waste of money that you could use on other developments for your China business. So the first point is really analyzing the structural plan. And I wanna emphasize here that companies should develop a phased plan. So phase one might be, we don't need an entity yet, let's try and do things from home. But let's really calculate and analyze how we can do it effectively from home. Phase two might be, I still don't need a company, but I'd really like to have a customer service rep or a sales manager or a business development manager on the ground that can handle face-to-face -face communication, time zone issues are not, an, are not a problem, it just becomes more effective. 
phase three might be, oh, you know what, now we need to start generating revenue locally. We've got expenses to pay. It's getting troublesome to do it from the headquarter. Um, and now we need to start transacting locally. Clients are starting to request FAPIAOs, um, which are the, the VAT invoices. So you know what, let's think about that. And for each phase, think about how long you wanna be in that phase. 12 months, 18 months, 24 months before moving on to the next phase, okay? In all of that structural planning, you gotta think about a liability, okay? How much liability will my ed head office have? Or as an entrepreneur, how much liability will befall on my shoulders? Flexibility, we wanna develop structures. And my goal for you is to develop structures that are flexible, meaning that you can basically um, fulfill any order um, with any structure or any phase that you're in. Sounds too good to be true, and sometimes it is, but you wanna make sure that your structural plan is there to give you in each phase flexibility to win a project, win a bid, fulfill an order, okay? Marketability, something people sometimes also truly underestimate is um, Chinese consumers and Chinese businesses, uh, quite frankly, they are much more committed to you if you have an entity in China. Um, again, it's a type of perception psychologically that they have. If you have an entity on the ground, it doesn't even, they won't even do a background check necessarily on how many employees, et cetera. It's just that you have a registered office address. If they ask to see a business license, you can show it to them um, and that you have an entity. Uh, it does help to win bids. Um, it does help to, to get orders and get business. Then something that I highlighted, the last three points in this are things that I highlighted in yesterday's presentation, which you really do have to think about. And again, um, you know, these are all items I, I, I go into much greater detail about and give you know, workshops on um, to develop structural plans, to develop business scopes, which are actually the business activities. So if you didn't join yesterday's, the business scope is actually um, what is stated in your business license as to the activities that you are allowed and permitted to do in the market. Um, what I recommend to everyone, if you haven't done that, and, and again, great way to put it in your business plan is to have a slide where you have bullet points of all the activities you wanna perform in year one, two, and three, all the activities you wanna perform in year four, five, six, all the activities you wanna perform in year seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I, I usually, again, do it in three stages. Registered office address, this really pertains only to the fact if you wanna implement in China, you will need a registered office address. First step is finding a location in Chinese territory. Where, what city do you wanna be in? Then you have to filter down to what district in that city do you want to be in, um, and you know the ideas of remaining in that city. Again, you've got to think a lot about tax and legal perspectives when choosing your office address. Name of company, also something really that has to go in your business plan. Is the name of the company associated with your trademark? Okay, the answer to that is no, it's not. It's two separate applications. It has nothing to do one with the other. Um, but again, you need a Chinese name. Is the Chinese name critical for your business? For Woodburn, it is not. The only place you will see our Chinese name is when we issue you a FAPIO, okay? Um, I market myself only with Woodburn accountants and advisors. So, you know, think about again your strategy. Do you need a Chinese name? If you do need a Chinese name, what kind of a Chinese name do you need? Do you help, need help to create a Chinese name? Um, I have had companies um, actually appoint feng shui masters. Um, these are good luck um, individuals who will create lucky names for your business. Um, I've had companies come up with between 100 and 150 names before they got approved. Um, but just keep in mind, the Chinese name of the company has nothing to do with the trademark registration of your brand, okay? Other things to think about under organization and management. Look, I mean, these are 16 subheadings under one key chapter, okay? You've got to think about total investment and register capital. So how much money do you need? You will only know how much money you need when you create your budget. 
Okay, so we're going to be looking at that in tomorrow's session. Who's the shareholder going to be? Is it going to be an individual? Again, these are things I looked up at yesterday. So yesterday I was reflecting a lot on points 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14, all about you know, who was going to be appointed within the corporate structure, who was going to have the signing authorities. Point 15 is human resources. You've got to add that in your organization and management. Like I said, who is going to actually be the, the so-called China decision maker? Who's going to instigate everything? And then do you need a team of people underneath you to fulfill the operational guidelines? So do you need somebody who speaks Chinese to interact with your customers? Um, who's going to be interacting with the logistics providers? Who's going to be interacting with the banks? How are you going to do the transaction flow? Um, all of these types of things you've got to think under human resource, okay? And then obviously think about the ongoing operational costs. And again, that's part of the budget. And the budget needs to reflect phase one, phase two, and phase three, okay? Because it gives you a total um, view on how much money you will need to get this company um, going up. Okay, so I've listed here a couple of things to think about when you are looking at your business scope, because that's really a big point when you're trying to implement in China. Um, you've got to understand China's business licenses and activities. Do you need additional permits to do the business? Um, the negative list catalog is ultimately, um, are you allowed? to do business in China? Are you in a restricted or um, uh, prohibited sector? Choosing the activity that is right for you is so critical, okay? Um, I probably have not had one client in 16 years that has not amended or changed their business scope throughout their journey. I think that's very fair for me to say. So, you've got to keep it in your mind that the business scope should be something that's broad enough that you can do everything you want to do in the first three years of operation and then if you need to add anything in order to add something from your activities be prepared and understand what it takes to change your business scope okay you've got to look into the future like i say power is knowledge is power the more you know the more you can explain things to investors directors Etc. It just makes you um, sound so much more convincing because you know how every step is going to work. Okay. So, what's next after that? Okay. Um, business scope tips. Again, I highlighted these yesterday. Um, two things. Number one, research your competitors. So, as part of the research superpower, you should definitely do a background check on your competitors. Try and extract content from their business licenses to know what their business scopes are. Um, it also helps to know where they're actually located. Um, and it might help you to understand if they are doing something outside of their business scope, why are they doing that? Why haven't they amended it? Is there a legal issue behind that? Um, it just gives you so much insight into how they are actually operating. Okay. In addition to that, take a paper and write all activities and products and services you wish to perform now, in five years, and in 10 years. You decide, I mean, I put it as three phases, right? Now, five, and 10. You can do it now, meaning one year one to three, um, phase two is year four to six, and then phase three is year seven to 10. Decide how you wanna do it, but take a paper and write everything down. You want to have a scope that is broad as possible. So definitely talk to a market entry advisor about how you can do that. Okay. And then be prepared. Um, the COC consistently makes amendments and adapts the original, the original scope to make it more succinct. Um, and there has to be a lot of back and forth and clarifications with the COC as the Ministry of Commerce. Um, it is something that you should, should be positive. You should not fear these amendments or the communication or interaction. Um, interaction is great when you do have it from the, the Chinese government, okay? Um, if you wanna start, for example, doing retail, but you don't wanna do it in phase one, you should be prepared that you'll have to update your business scope, uh, sign a lease agreement for rental space, 
and then you can start doing retail, but you will also have to set up a branch office in that retail location. So a lot of things to think about from the business scope side. Okay. Um, so I'm almost to the end of the presentation. Um, so that will leave a lot of time for Q&A. Uh, but I hope that this has basically given you an understanding of how to start putting pen to paper um, and making notes on how you want to create your business plan. Okay. Don't rush yourself. Okay, your business plan isn't something you can really, it, you can't throw it together in a few hours. Do your research on every single chapter. And I can tell you now, if you are an entrepreneur and you're looking for investors, the more detail you go into, the more you have leverage over your investors that when they do ask you questions, most likely you will have already the answers in your business plan. Okay, you want it to be as detailed as is possible. Be conservative, um, and I say this particularly to the enthusiasts in this webinar session. Um, you are probably extremely excited about going into China. You can foresee the gold in the pot at the end of the rainbow. Um, the problem is, is that, as I wrote it here, enthusiasm is great, but not when the results disappoint, okay? So be very conservative with your business plan. Think about obstacles that can arise, scenarios that might cause you to halt your business or may not allow you to go in the right direction. Create scenarios where that might happen. Um, when in doubt, you know, leave a little, little wiggle room in your plan and your objectives, okay? Give yourself a little bit of slack in the business plan because I can tell you, obstacles arise for everyone in China. There is always going to be a roadblock on the roadmap. Um, monitor, evaluate, and reforecast. COVID-19, an absolute perfect example of this, okay? Don't write your business plan or create the PowerPoint presentation um, and put it then in a drawer and forget about it. If you have the ability, create a vision board and post your um, business plan on that vision board uh, so that you see it all the time and it reminds you all the time of what direction you want to go to. Um, business plan should be monitored. Um, like I said, end of February, I had to completely revamp mine together with the budget. Uh, and you know, you, you kind of have to reforecast consistently throughout the year. I know I will have to create another business plan and budget come end of June uh, based on the circumstances that are arising at that point. So make sure with your business plans um, that you're monitoring, evaluating, and consistently reforecasting them. How can we help you? Um, basically, we offer the China Roadmap Program, which um, helps you to accelerate your entry and gives you guidance. If you want more information on that, happy to give it to you. We also provide incorporation advisory, business plan and budget validation. So we can help you basically to read through your business plans and your budgets and throw back questions. You know, if you want us to act as a, um, or you want us to, you know, you want to bounce ideas off of us or use us as a, um, how do you call that, a rehearsal before meeting with investors, we do that as well. And then obviously we can help you to incorporate in China, Hong Kong, and implement and grow, um, and we also have implementation growth services. One thing I didn't highlight here is if you are simply transacting with China, one thing that we offer as a package is to review contracts, look at tax optimization structures, um, and also brainstorm with you on operational guidelines to create when you're just simply transacting with China. So if you wanna book a strategy session with me, please do. I'm gonna add the link into the questions section. Um, well, no, I'll put it in the chat section. That makes it a little bit easier. Um, you can set up a call with me uh, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, really no strings attached here. It's a way for us to just communicate, brainstorm a little bit, um, and, um, and see what, what you need to think about. So let's go on um, to questions. 
Okay, so I'm gonna actually relate first to a couple of questions that came in in the registration form. So the first one is, um, based on the new foreign investment law, how do I have to think about my business plan or change my business plan in some shape or form? You don't. So if you are a newbie to China, the foreign investment law basically is a revamping of all of the foreign laws that existed for woofies, FISAs, and joint ventures. Basically, there is now one, one investment regime, which is applicable to all Chinese companies and foreign companies that are going into China. Um, uh, the foreign investment law does not have so much differentiations um, based on the section that we talked about today on organization and management. You still have to go through all of those subheadings. And the foreign investment law doesn't really play a role in it. Um, the law itself just reflects on how there's a more fair playing field between foreign companies and, and Chinese companies. So it, it really does not have so much impact on you um, when you're creating your business plan. What is the most important part of the business plan? From my perspective, as I mentioned earlier, I think all parts of the business plan are important. Um, if I'm thinking from an investor's point of view, probably the market analysis, um, marketing strategy, sales strategy, and also budget, financial planning, and capital requirements would be something that um, would pique my interest the most, okay? So now there's a lot of questions that have come in. Um, so let me go through them. So Lionel's asked, where can I get the negative list and encourage list of activities in English? You can go to Google and type in China negative list. You can also type in China positive list and you will find a lot of avenues to, or a lot of um, links um, to an English version. Do the business plan, um, so one from Pierre Antonio, does the business plan could be used as a base for the visa feasibility study requested to open a Wolfier JV? Very good question, Pierre Antonio. You are not required to submit a feasibility study any longer in China when you're incorporating an entity. And this has been already for about seven, eight years. Um, which obviously, so back in my day, in 2003, 2004, we used to create fake feasibility studies for our clients um, because they did not want to create business plans and we had to submit one. Um, and I think the government was realizing that most service providers and law firms were just creating these random feasibility studies that were like five pages long. Um, and they revoked it from the document list. So feasibility studies are no longer required when you're setting up an entity in China. However, you should still be creating your business plan, okay? Um, a question from Raphael, what is the best way to bring benefits to the headquarters? So you're talking about profit repatriation, I assume. So when you have an entity in China, what are the best ways to bring money back? There are many profit repatriation strategies that you can create. Um, the first one, for example, and mind you, um, Raphael, this is a very good question because it should be in the business plan as well. That is a very big question that uh, boards of directors do ask is how do I get money out? So um, how you can get your money out, the first one is you can have a licensing agreement on trademarks if you register your trademark in China. That's a very simple one. Um, another profit repatriation uh, strategy is through service agreements, for example, technical agreements, um, marketing agreements. But I just want to keep in mind, nowadays, none of these agreements can be faked, okay? All of these agreements have to be true and valid. Why do I say that? For example, if you want to do a licensing agreement for your trademark, the Tax Bureau will request in China they will request to see the trademark license to see who's the ultimate owner. If you want to have a management fee agreement, um, because you have a lot of managers traveling from the headquarters to help operate the, the entity in China, then you need to show passport copies of the entry and exits of those managers that have been traveling in and out of China. So the tax bureaus in China are taking this very seriously when you want to bring money out. They want those agreements to be true and valid. 
I think I have answered all of the questions that have come in. Um, again, if you've got more questions or you want to have a discussion with me, you can either email me at christina at woodburnglobal.com or you can set up a strategy session. I'd be happy to talk to you. It's usually much easier to talk um, than to write emails back and forth. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about how to create a budget in China, and then we're going to be talking on Thursday about 10 reasons companies are not successful in China. If you haven't registered for either of those and you would like to, you can go to the website, woodburnglobal.com slash events uh, to register. I hope that this session was very useful to you. If you do have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and I hope to see you all again in the next two sessions. Take care and goodbye.